Hi, my name is Leandro Facchinetti, and in this video I want to talk to you about a programming language called Racket, why I think it's a great language, and why I'm not using it anymore. First, to counter my admittedly clickbaity title, I want to give you a summary. I used to use Racket almost exclusively for a couple of years, a few years ago, and I think it's a great language, probably the best designed language I have ever seen. It allows you to express ideas about code in a way that is clear and precise and compact, but I'm not using it anymore because I no longer buy into its premise, which is something called language-oriented programming. I just think that maybe Racket is too out there, it's too different for you to be able to communicate effectively with other programmers. Also, unfortunately, I had some bad experiences with people in the Racket community, especially people up top who help design and build the language and help shape its community. But more on that later. Let's begin with some backstory. I first heard about Racket when I was a PhD student. I was interested in typography, and then this colleague, which was also a PhD student, said, hey, you should read this book, it's called Practical Typography, and I think you will like it. And I read it, and in fact, I loved it. First, because it is a very well-written book, but also because it was written in a programming language that was designed to build a book, and this programming language was written in Racket. So I built a bunch of things using Racket, mostly static websites using Pollen, and then some Racket packages to be used on top of Pollen or alongside with Pollen, one of which was to build components like you would do with React, but using Pollen, and another one that was like one of those CSS preprocessors like SAS and LAS, but based on S expressions, which are like this unique way of writing programs that is familiar for languages in the Lisp tradition, which Racket is part of. I also did a qualifying project for my PhD using Racket. It was in the field of cryptography, and I designed a language for cryptographers to use to express their cryptography schemes. I also made a bunch of contributions to the language itself and to the ecosystem around the language, contributing to packages like Pollen. And finally, right as I was leaving the Racket community, I built the first version of what could have become my dissertation before I dropped out of the PhD program. I built that in Racket. And it was a program analysis thing. It's really out there in programming language theory, so I won't get into that too much. Okay, so that's how I learned about Racket, and those are the things that I built with Racket, so everything else I say about the language should be colored by this experience. Now let's talk about the things that I love about the language. First off, I think it allows you to express ideas about code in the most elegant way. I have to admit, I really like S expressions, which is a contentious point because many people hate them, but I think they help express ideas in a way that is non-ambiguous and clear, and once you get used to it, you can read it very well, I think maybe better than other forms of syntax. And also you cannot make a video about Bracket without mentioning macros, I think they are great. They allow you to rewrite the program in the compilation steps, which is super powerful, but at the same time can lead to code that no one else can read or maintain, and more on that later. Also, the support for the language is great. It is reasonably fast for the kind of language that it is, and it's getting faster with new updates. They are changing the core of the language to some other virtual machine to make it faster. It is frequently updated. The documentation for Racket looks great and reads great most of the time. It was written by people who write for a living, so they kind of know what they're doing. There are some excellent books about Racket, including probably one of my favorite programming books ever called Beautiful Racket. And the mailing list is usually very active and you can get very good answers there. As a programming language student, I was also drawn to Racket for other reasons. There is some very interesting research going on there. Probably one of the most prominent examples is Typed Racket, which I think helped to inspire TypeScript. And there is a whole lot more that you can do with Racket, from web programming to graphical user interfaces, and even some things that you might not expect, like generative art and typesetting and video editing. But really, where Racket shines is for creating new languages. This is the idea of language-oriented programming which is to create new languages based on the domain of the problem you are working with. Ideally, these new languages would allow you to communicate better with the domain experts. For example, think of a cryptographer who is a mathematician, not a programmer. You can create a new language to allow them to express ideas about cryptography. And at first, this sounds great. But here are the reasons why I don't believe in this premise anymore, and why I'm not using Racket anymore. Let us all agree that programs should communicate ideas about what the computer should do to other people first and the machine second. Yes, you want your program to execute, but mainly you want other people to be able to read, understand, and maintain your code. And of course I didn't come up with this mindset, it's the ethos of the Racket community. But if you believe that, then programming is not about finding the best and most expressive way to write some idea about code. 
It's to communicate that idea to other people. It's not about writing code that you could print and frame it on your wall. It's about what other people make of it. Now, if you're creating your own languages, who are you communicating with? Of course, there will be people who are willing to learn your language, but you have to play into what people already know. And maybe you can bring ideas of other programming languages into yours, but I think that it's much more effective to communicate through graphical user interfaces, spreadsheets, and other things like that that people kind of already know how to use. And if you're really into the idea of communicating through code, I think that the best way to do that is with an embedded domain-specific language, which is a language that lives within another existing language. And the great thing about doing that is that people already have some expectations about how these other languages work, and they know their syntax and they have tools that they already like to use them. And at that point, why would you choose Racket as your host language? You're carving a tiny world within the small world of Racket. And in most cases, you're asking your users or programmers to buy all into this ecosystem that is too out there. I think that we have other languages that allow you to do this idea of embedding a domain-specific language, and people already know them. They are languages like JavaScript and Lua and Ruby. When you're using these other languages, I find it's much easier to find people who care about your project and want to contribute to it. Unfortunately, I think that's probably the main reason why most Racket projects like Pollen and some others are run by one person or a small group of people. Speaking of people, I think it's very sad that I had some bad experiences with some people in the record community, especially the people up top, because they are the kind of people who are smart and they know about it and they will not lose a chance to tell you. I'll give you some examples. I was at a record conference having dinner with one of the creators of the language and some other attendees, and the creator of the language had some very good points about higher education and how it is kind of a scam in the US. But to prove his point, he decided to ask some questions to the waiter that were kind of uncomfortable and everyone at the table kind of cringed. Of course, the waiter was gracious about it, but still. As another example, I was talking to another one of the creators of the language and he called one of my collaborators a doofus and the educator at my university, which used to be the Johns Hopkins University, a bunch of donkeys. I understand that he had some points to make about how educators work, but this is not the way you make them, right? It comes to a point that when I was talking to the students of these people, they're kind of afraid of talking to their advisors. And I must admit that spending time with these people is one of the reasons why I decided to drop out of the PhD and leave academia altogether, because if that's how it looks like to be successful in these communities, I think I prefer to try to be successful somewhere else. And I know that in every community there are people who are toxic, and I must admit that the record community introduced me to some of the best people I have ever met, like Matthew Butterick and Jay McCarthy, they are kind, they are generous, they are super smart, but unfortunately I think that this is one of those cases in which the bad outweighs the good. At least it did for me. Anyway, in conclusion, will I be using Racket in the near future? Probably not. But should you learn Racket and should you maybe use Racket? Totally, absolutely, it's a great language. If you want to learn more about language-oriented programming in Racket, there is a book called Language-Oriented Programming in Racket, a cultural anthropology, which is a series of interviews with many people in the Racket community, including myself. Yes, someone interviewed me for a book, isn't that great? If you're interested in learning more about this, there is a link in the description. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching this. This is atypical for me doing this kind of vlog thing, but I wanted to share this experience because I think Racket is an interesting language and I had some good and bad experiences that I wanted to share. Anyway, thanks for watching this and I see you on the next one. Bye.